<laughs> so as we're growing up, uh, when we're brought into this world, we have no expectations. We have absolutely no expectations. But we learn, in life we learn the good versus bad, right versus wrong, success versus failure as we're growing up. And then we're, we're taught, we're almost conditioned to this new concept, this formula. You work hard, the better you will be and the more choices you have. It's a simple formula. I'm gonna keep coming back to this formula today, but it's hard, it's not a hard formula, we all know it, nothing to learn here. So let's, 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 focus, on, let's focus on choices. We go through life, everywhere we, everywhere we turn our heads to, we have so many choices. The ones we choose and the ones we completely avoid. Choices everywhere. Let's, like, let's take an example, the example of children bringing life into this world. What does that have to do with choices, right? As, 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 as parents, when we bring children, as parents, I wanna buy the best for my child. I want to I wanna walk into a store and I want to be able to buy the best product, the best accessory for my child. M the way I shop, the way my expectations are, everything changes when I become a parent. I'm not a parent, but I'm assuming many of you are. <laughs> You'd know. Uh, when you walk into a store, any category you choose, you have choices. Baby bags, you have so many choices. Is it as easy as having a checklist on what the best can be and just choosing that? then everybody would be choosing just one product, the best product. But it's not as easy as that. We live on Earth, it's a little more complicated. <coughs> Affordability, can you afford to buy a product? Do you need that product? Do you want that product? Is it worth the amount of money you're gonna spend on it? These are questions we ask ourselves every time we buy something, every time we turn our heads to a particular choice. Every time. Now the child, as the child's growing up, he or she has, has choices of his or her own. Which university can I go to? Where will I find the best research? Where will I find the best professors, the friends? Where, where can I learn? Where can I, which will be the best environment for me? I walk down the street. Where can I find the best accessories? Which brand should I go down? Which, which, what should I buy? So many, I'm so confused. Which job? There are so many jobs. I'm assuming, I'm not, it's not 2008. I'm assuming there are a lot of jobs. <laughs> and uh, I, w which job would give me holistic development of my skills? Where can I showcase my talent? Where can I build my personality? Again, choices, so many choices. What is all this leading to? There's so much competition. So much competition in society. We're competing all the time. We're competing with forces we can see, we are, we're competing with people at any given point of the day. Again, what is this leading to? Ambition, there's so many ambitious people. Ambitious people everywhere, in emerging markets, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, whatever you call it, brick, brim, whatever you call it nowadays. You have so much competition, not just in emerging markets, you have competition everywhere. What is it leading to? Competition and ambition put together is leading to materialism. The, the extent to which this affects a person being materialistic is different. Everybody is different being materialistic, but what is it doing? Competition and ambition is making us materialistic. So we're competing, we're competing all the time. We're competing against forces we can see, we're competing against forces we we cannot see, we're, we're competing with people, we're competing with older people, we're competing with younger people, we're competing with our knowledge, without our knowledge, we're competing just all the time. We're competing, we're competing so much. So I'm growing up, uh, I listen to all these things people are telling me in life. I'm, I'm listening to opinions, I'm listening to ideas, I'm listening to success stories, I'm listening to, to failures, I'm listening to all these things people are telling me, and then the formula, and then the formula, you work hard, the better you'll be, and the more choices you have. This is told to me. So I might choose a different path to get there, but the, the formula remains the same. It's stuck to me. It's told to me in different ways, but it's conditioned into my head. So I'm from a lower middle class family. I'm growing up, and I look at all these fancy things around me. And I ask, I ask society, I ask, I ask my friends, I ask my parents, how is this possible? I don't have it, how is that possible? And I'm conditioned 
I'm conditioned to believe that I work hard, the better I'll be, and the more choices I'll have. I'm not saying everybody is like that. Some people learn to love themselves and don't give a damn. But <laughs> most of us, most of us uh, are in this endless rat race. We're running this race every single day. We're running a race. We're just running. We're running. We're competing against other rats. We're, we're running towards what? We're running towards these tiny rewards. And once we win these rewards, what do we do? It's a contest. I show off my reward. Why not? It's a contest. I won. I showed off. And now what, what do the other rats want? These other rats run even faster. Why? Because they want the reward. They get bigger rewards. Now they show the bigger rewards to other rats. And the other rats are running even faster. And this is an epidemic. This is an endless disease. This is an epidemic. And we're doing it every day. We're doing it every minute of every day. If you don't accept it, well, well you don't accept it, but you're running too. <laughs> Everybody is running all the time. We're competing. It's crazy. This endless rat race. It's an epidemic and we're living in oblivion. We're happy. We're very happy running this race. We're very, very happy. So I grow up. I look at all these things around me. I, I, as I said, lower middle class family. I, I look at all these fancy things. And I work hard. I want to be better. So I want to buy myself that condo. I got a good job. So I buy myself a condo. I buy myself a townhouse that has a front yard and a backyard where my kids can play. I never had a yard growing up let alone a house. I want to buy all this. I want to, the formula told me that if I work hard, I'll be better. That's what the formula told me. So I want to be treated, I want to be treated right wherever I go. I want to be treated with a sense of luxury. I want to be treated better because I worked hard. Why not? I want to be treated better. I want to be able to afford all these small accessories all around me. I want to be able to walk into a store and buy whatever I want. I want to, why not? I worked hard. The ultimate symbol, I've arrived, I've worked hard in life, and I've, I've really, really worked hard. What do I do? I buy myself a car. I do. Car sales in emerging markets are exploding. The numbers are mind-boggling. It's scary. It's insane. It's unbelievable. What is this leading to? Again, what is this all leading to? Commuter pain driving in cities. You have two Chinese cities. You have two Indian cities. New York is number 15. I'll tell you why. I, I, I was talking about this. Somebody spoke about the climate being adorable here. So another funny story. I remember landing in New York from Bangalore. I went for a research study in India. I remember landing in, uh, uh, in New York, JFK. Took a cab to lower Manhattan. And the, the cabbie's complaining on how bad the traffic is. I agree. It was really bad. But he also continued on and said, New York has the worst traffic in the world. And I had to say, my friend, you're really cute. You're adorable. <laughs> because <laughs> New York does not have the worst traffic in the world. Because I just got here from Bangalore. We have traffic problems. You do not have traffic problems. So <laughs> in a period of five to six years, we've gone from New York having the worst traffic in the world to New York traffic being cute. <laughs> in five to six years. Keep that in mind. So the existing symbol of the middle class, the growing middle class, the car. At the Changing Places group at the MIT Media Lab, led by Kent Larson and at TU Delft, along with research partners at Isobar, Rat Lab, Fake Love, and Dia, we try to look at real life problems hitting people in the faces every day. How do we leverage technology? How do we bring in technology to solving these problems? How do you not just look at this in a social perspective, but how do you bring in technology to solve these problems? How do we understand the cognitive behavior and thinking of people? How do you use technology to solve it? So today, I'm going to take one card from this huge deck of problems, and I'm going to try to solve it. Let's look at transportation. We all, transportation, the act of moving from one place to another. There are a lot of people in emerging markets who still use public transportation. There are, there are too many people, so a lot of people use it. But there's a, growing be, there's a growing group of people who are vehemently opposed to public transportation who will only use private transportation. Why? Because they worked hard. They want to be better. The formula told them that you work hard, you can be better. I do not want to use public transportation because it's dirty, there are too many people, it's never on time, it's, it's not reliable, and I don't have the freedom of choice on wherever I want to go. 
what is this leading to? Insane amounts of traffic. Just for the record, this is not the worst traffic in the world. This is the seventh worst traffic in the world. <laughs> this is the longest traffic in the world. It was the China 110 highway. It lasted for 10 days. Just for the record, that's more than an Indian cricket match. It's more than a test match. <laughs> 10 days, the cars moved at an average of one kilometer a day. Think about that, one kilometer a day. Notice that there's no public transportation here. Sao Paulo, Brazil. Time Magazine rated them as the worst daily traffic. Worst daily traffic. They had an accumulated traffic of 893 kilometers. Can you imagine that? 893 kilometers of accumulated traffic on one morning. One morning. Car sales are shooting up in these countries. In China, it went up by 75% year by year compared to 50% the year before. India went up by 50% compared to 25% the year before. Double. Brazil, 3.1 million cars sold in 2009. And they're beating themselves every year. They gotta beat themselves, right? It's competition. 51% of all cars sold in 2010 were in emerging markets. And this number is only increasing. In the developed world, you have this concept called a peak car. What is peak car? The average number of miles driven was dropping. The average number of cars that are being bought is stabilizing. The average number of miles driven by an American has been dropping from 2004. The number of vehicles coming into central London has been dropping for the last decade. It's not so in developing markets. Now I understand you have a long day of work, you sleep, you get up in the morning, you're excited. I'm assuming you're happy to go to work. I'm assuming that. So you get ready, you get out of your house, you worked hard, so you want to be better. You get into your car. You have to have your car. You get into your car and you start driving. Bottleneck traffic. Bottleneck traffic, as usual. You're frustrated. You almost wish you could fly. You almost wish you could fly. So we went down to a city in India. We went down to Bangalore. We looked at a top middle class, middle class neighborhood. We mapped out the number of houses that have an average of a car. And then we mapped out the number of houses that have an average of two cars. So a family of three is taking two cars to work. That's insane. Imagine all these people can open up their smart devices, choose a pickup point and a drop-off point, just like you do in a cab service. But you don't have a cab to come pick you up. Imagine all these people can do that on their phones in the morning, and you have a bus that comes to pick you up. Imagine that. Imagine you're sitting at your home, you're in a restaurant, you're at work, wherever you are. As easy as you would, go on your phone, request for a service, and a bus is waiting for you outside. Waiting where you are. You don't have to go to the bus stop. It's, it comes to you. So we create, this is, not, this is not an ordinary bus. This is a bus where you can relax. A bus where you can go, where you can travel in comfort. So we created an on-demand service. This is a map of the area we studied. So we created an on-demand service, just like a taxi service, where we placed buses randomly around the city. And as people start requesting for it, the buses start getting rerouted. So we designed an algorithm and a platform that looks at how people ask for these services and routes buses automatically, real time. From the point anybody requests for a bus, seven minutes is all it takes for the bus to come pick you up. Seven minutes, just like you would in a cab. You request for a service, seven minutes later you have a bus waiting for you. And it's the same, as the bus is driving around, it picks other people up, wherever they are, at your doorstep or at your workplace. And the bus is constantly rerouted, the constant rerouting. The algorithm is constantly rerouting, depending on how you people are requesting for the bus. What are the other buses doing, you may ask? The other buses are doing the same thing. There are other people requesting for the service. These buses are just driving around depending on how people are requesting for the service. So an on-demand mass transit service, imagine, think about that. A taxi, almost a taxi service, but with buses. Think about that. But this is not, this is not, an, or, this is not an ordinary bus, as I was saying. You don't have to deal with, as I, I remember the formula. So I worked hard, I wanna be better, so. You don't want to travel in a bus with too many people inside. I understand. So it's not a bus which has too many people inside. 
Think about seats that know who you are before you even sit on it. Think about seats that can know your favorite music playing in the background, your favorite massage mode set in, your favorite lighting. Data synced automatically. Whatever's on the cloud is automatically synced to a screen in front of you. You can do whatever you want. You travel in comfort. It's hassle-free. You don't have to drive. You relax when you're going to work. You just relax. But is that, is that the same convenience as a car? We asked ourselves that. Once we did this, we asked ourselves. It's not. It's not the same convenience as a car. What is that convenience you have in a car? What is that one convenience you have? You can always travel when you leave home. You want to go to a new point. You want to go to a new destination. I decide to go to a restaurant. So I, I start driving. I get into my car. I start driving. And as I'm going, I decide I don't want to go there anymore. I, I want to go to a friend's house. But it's your car. You can do whatever you want. So I go to my new destination. I just start driving there. Why not? It's my car. I can do whatever I want. But in a mass transit system, that's not the case. You have other people I've picked up, right? It's always the complaint. When I'm on a train, I have to get off, I have to go to a new point, I have to change stations, I have to go to, the, I have to, go to a new pickup point. Even if I've created an on-demand service, I've picked up all these other people who want to go to the same destination. What do I do here? So we have now created a system, an algorithm, that lets you, that gives you the same convenience as a car, the ability to change your mind once you're inside the bus. The ability to change your mind and be dropped off to your new destination on time. Think about it. How cool is that? Every time I talk about it, I get goosebumps. Because this is not just a fancy bus and an on-demand bus. This is a bus service where you can change your mind like you would inside a car and still be dropped off to your location on time. This is a live demo we ran in, in Bangalore. It's as easy as sitting inside the bus, opening up your map, choosing a new drop-off point, and literally, in front of your own eyes, you can see your own bus being rerouted to the new destination. It's as easy as that. I'm sitting inside. There are 15 people with me. I choose a new point. I say, I don't want to go there anymore. I choose a new point, And the bus is rerouting itself. And everybody gets dropped off in time. Not just you, but everybody else. All the 20 people on that bus will get dropped off in time. How insanely cool is that? The same convenience as a car. So all these people who have been dependent on cars don't have to use don't have to use their car anymore because on a macro scale i've created an on demand service where you can you can have a bus waiting for you in 7 minutes on a micro level you you know seats that know who you are business class coming to you you know seats that know who you are before you even sit inside on a personal level this service gives you the same convenience as a car the convenience of changing your mind like you would inside a car and still being dropped off your, to your location on time. This would get so many cars off the street if all these people get into these buses. I present to you the new symbol of luxury, the new choice of luxury, the new choice for the middle class. I present to you the new choice of the middle class. Thank you. <laughs>